Hey guys! What up? Today I'll be showing off a quick tutorial on how to set up Parsec to essentially be playing Smash Ultimate online. This is currently the best possible way to be playing online as of this recording. We all know a dog water the online netcode is an ultimate. Oh, okay. Connection error. Quick little disclaimer, this video is purely made for setting up Parsec to be used to connect to a device that has used you already and optimized for Smash Ultimate. This is not a video for Yuzu itself. That can be found elsewhere. People happy. So jumping into it, these are the following requirements to get Parsec up and running. Number one, of course, is a controller of your preference. For this video, I'll be showing off how to set up a game controller along with its adapter and its drivers in order for Parsec to register them. Number two is a PC that is capable to running a program similar to how Stadia or xCloud is even used. Number three is a stable connection, preferably a wired connection for the lowest latency. Keep in mind, this will not affect anyone else but yourself. Unlike Ultimate, if you lag or anyone else does, it won't affect others. It will only interfere with your video connection and the quality of your stream. And finally, the following programs displayed on screen is what will need to be installed to get the GameCube adapter up and running. So starting off, of course, you want to download Parsec. In short, Parsec is a remote desktop program that allows low latency at high resolution, selective FPS, along with gamepad inputs and many more features. This is mainly designed for gaming and I'll be showing off how it will play an effect later while playing Ultimate. But as you can see, I already have Parsec installed. For a new user, you gotta ensure that you have an account in order to get up and running. This process is fairly straightforward but for now, we can close up Parsec until later on, and I'll explain why Parsec needs to be shut down completely. Ensure that Parsec is not only closed by the window, but it is also closed by the task manager. Now onto the controller of your preference. I personally use a gaming controller in Smash along with many others. So these are the following programs required in order for a gaming controller to be usable in Parsec. So first off is Zadig. Zadig is a program that reinstalls a driver of any device in this case, We'll be using it for, so that Windows can read the Wii U slash Switch mode integrated on your third-party GameCube adapter. And if you have a first-party GameCube adapter, this is needed for the adapter to be used at as well. So the first off is you want to download is a dig 2.5, the latest version up here. And uh, as you can see, I already have it installed. So open that up and you should be greeted with this screen. So with this, you want to go to the options menu and list all the devices now that all the devices are listed, you want to find your GameCube adapter. And if you're having troubles finding it, it is actually named after WUP028. And once WUP028 is found, just click on that. And what you want to do is just reinstall the driver. So once the driver is done, you can now exit and close out of the dig. Uh, another thing to note for Zadig is I've only tested this on a Mayflash adapter and a first party Nintendo GameCube adapter. Some adapters may appear different in the program itself, but overall the procedure should be the exact same as a Mayflash or a first party. It may appear different on, on your end, but for the most part I've tested on a Mayflash and a first party and they've worked pretty flawlessly. So now that we have the driver installed, the next and final program is Delphnovin. So huge shout out to Struggleton for developing this program. This wouldn't be possible without him, so please give him a follow on Twitter as he provides the latest updates on Delphnovin. What this program does is it emulates the GameCube controller to be read as an Xbox controller, as the native GameCube controller does not work with Parsec at this point in time. Hopefully in the future the Parsec team will integrate it, but this is the current workaround for game controllers to be read on Parsec. So in this GitHub link, you want to grab the latest version of Delphnovin, which will be provided in the description below, along with everything else mentioned earlier in the video. So once you've downloaded the Delphnovin, so what you want to do is place it anywhere you like and unzip it. So now you have it unzipped and unpacked. I'd recommend having this as a desktop shortcut, as you always want to open this before opening Parsec. So once you have that opened, you can open up Delphnovin. Uh, before proceeding, I'd always press A and start on your controller to make sure everything's plugged in and it reads it beforehand. And once you have that set up, press one and then enter. And now as you can see, all my inputs are re registering 
This is where you check all your controllers are working and all the buttons are registering. Awesome. So now that your GameCube controller is now set up, it is currently emulating a Xbox controller. So now you're able to open up Parsec again. Uh, feel free to just minimize this, both tabs. Uh, it is totally fine that they're minimized as long as they're still running. Everything should be all good. So now you're able to open up Parsec again. So what do you want to do when you open Parsec? Go to your settings, enter the gamepad options, and then ensure you're clicking on the right input. All the gamepad may vary. Mine is currently just one. So now you can just check that your control sticks are working. That those are okay. It should be right. So now we're finally ready to connect to a host that has user setup. So for this, you want to ensure that you're friends with the person and then you want to connect to them. Now that we have a Yuzu, Yuzu client, you want to press A on your controller. As you can hear, the device is now registered on their their end. So what we want to do is go to emulation, configure, and go straight to controls, and then map this to any player you want. So in this case, it would be player two. And now you want to select the device that you that's your device. Um, it would always show up as an X input because, as I said earlier, it is emulating an Xbox controller. So it should be a zero. Click on zero. So the first thing you want to do with this program is always map your Z button. Your Z button ends up being a weird button for some reason, but what you want to do is click on it and then press the button corresponding. So that's your Z button now. And for some reason, these are switched. All you have to do is click on it and then remap the corresponding buttons as such. And that's pretty much it. Uh, as you know, Game Controller doesn't have a ZL button, so that can be cleared by right clicking. And the final thing you want to do is your dead zones. Um, they also don't have a press button, so feel free to clear those, but that's not really necessary. Uh, the first thing you want to do is change the range. The range should for the left stick. I've noticed 70 has been the sweet spot. And then here it was 80. And then with the dead zone should be 10% here. That's totally fine. Feel free to play around with these dead zones to your personal likings. Uh, it completely depends on the player and how the controller is actually technically. So feel free to adjust those on the fly. It's completely uh, optional up to you. But these are the settings that I've noticed are the best. And now that's done. Your controller is now set up. Okay. And open up ultimate. There he is. And these are all my inputs. As you hear, the game sounds perfectly fine. I'm controlling all of it. First thing first, always go to your controls and set up your own controls. You may be noticing that the audio is jumping up and down. The reason for that, there is a setting in Parsec that you can just adjust that turns off Discord Echo. Feel free to adjust that on the fly if you're using Discord. One thing to note while setting up controls, the GameCube controller actually doesn't work as it's emulating another controller, it's emulating a pro controller. You can emulate it Joy Cons, but it's easier to, and best to do pro controllers. So any of these buttons, you want to switch over here to there and other settings apply as well. Perfectly fine. Just make sure you remember the controllers that you mapped on. So feel free to go test and you see everything's working. Everything's working fine and um, that's pretty much it. That's how you connect to a Parsec user using GameCube controls, and it really feels 10 times better than online. You will notice delays at times, but inputs will not be eaten, and this really opens the door for many more options playing online. You're able to play Squad Strike now, Special Smash, and Smash as well, of course. And as you can see, if you want to play with someone, you just go into regular Smash, and you're able to just select the character like you're playing right next to them. And that's how to set up Parsec on your end. I don't doubt that there'll be any issues or hiccups along the way, so feel free to leave a comment down below if you're having any troubles. One last thing to mention, you don't need to use a GameCube controller to get Parsec working. Most controllers that Windows supports are pretty much plug and play, and it brings it down to just mapping out buttons in Parsec. Thank you for watching, I do stream all to my Twitch channel, so feel obligated to use your Twitch Prime on me. I'll only be playing Parsec and Yuzu going forward if I stream Ultimate, so feel free to come by and challenge myself and others. Thanks again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with your dog. Peace.